Oh. It's just uh, twilight. Okay, so it looks like uh, Mayor Ireland is here, but uh, it doesn't have a screen on and it is 930. Um, I'd like to call uh, the Committee of the Whole meeting for February 23rd, 2021 to order at uh, 930. Um, oh, there's Mayor Ireland, welcome. Uh, <clears throat> Councillors, uh, you have the uh, uh, agenda in front of you. I'd like to ask if there's any additions to the agenda. No additions? No. Okay, well, um, may I have a motion to approve the agenda as presented? Thank you, uh, Councillor keller -Empe. All in favor? Um, lost screen for Councillor McGrath. And actually, sorry, I, I just noticed uh, Councillor Journeau is not here. Uh, did we know that, does anybody know that he was gonna be missing the meeting or should I stall? Uh, Deputy Mayor Wilson, I think we see him in the attendees list and he should be popping in right now. Yeah, he just popped up. Thank you. Welcome, Councillor Journeau. Uh, sorry, it was, uh, we had just uh, approved the agenda. Uh, Councillor Journeau, did you, you did, were you in need to, to add anything to the agenda? No. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, <clears throat> may I have a motion to approve the minutes? from uh, February 9th, 2021. Councillor DeMoto, thank you. All in favor? That's carried, thank you. Uh, moving on to <coughs> item five presentations. Uh, we have the Emergency Coordination Center uh, ECC update. Uh, we'll hand it over to uh, uh, Mr. Given for now, thank you. Sure. Thanks, Deputy Mayor Wilson. Uh, very brief update again this week. Uh, the ECC continues to meet on a weekly basis uh, to ensure we're keeping abreast of uh, local happenings and provincial uh, trends. Um, as Council is likely aware, we have seen our uh, active case numbers dip down again to three, thankfully. Um, but sadly, of course, there was one more death that had been attributed to the uh, outbreak um, at the Senior Centre. Um, and so it's very unfortunate news, but a reminder. Um, that uh, we are still in a pandemic. Um, you will have seen that the municipality has changed its messaging somewhat uh, in response to the reopening. Uh, we had some uh, robust discussion at the ECC about um, the responsibility of individuals versus um, uh, hospitality uh, establishments uh, and really recognize that the onus is on individuals to be ensuring that we are all, and I say we, including myself, um, all operating within the guidelines that the current public health orders, meaning that uh, when we go out to the newly reopened businesses that we should be um, seated at tables with our family groups. Um, there was some concern at the ECC um, that as uh, we get to this new stage of reopening where everybody, all of us, I think are excited to be able to get to more activities um, that we may forget uh, that focus of personal responsibility. And so uh, that was a discussion. You will have seen that change in the municipality's messaging, uh, just encouraging Jasperites uh, to uh, continue to, uh, to be vigilant. 
Um, the other issue of discussion is variants. Uh, there were 11 reported yesterday, new cases of the British and South African, mostly British, I think, uh, variants reported for a total of 289 cases in the province. Um, and this is an area where, of concern as those variants are uh, more contagious and easier to spread than the uh, original strain. Um, but those are the items that the ECC is keeping an eye on for now. And uh, we will continue to meet and meet again tomorrow, as a matter of fact. Um, that's the report, Deputy Mayor Wilson. Thank you for that, Mr. Gibbon. Any questions, councillors? Councillor Butler, please. Uh, thank you very much. I just wanted to clarify with respect to the news of a death at um, Alpine Summit that, and, and it's, it's only important just for clarity and messaging and not causing un, uh, undue worry in the community. And that is that the death referenced in the report that came out was not a new one. Uh, that was actually a death dating back to, I think it was the 12th of January. So one that the community already was aware of and the change is only that is, as I understand it, there was confirmation that that is being considered a COVID related death and some time was needed to affirm that. So I just want to be sure that there isn't um, in the community some sense that there's um, more of an issue in um, Alpine Summit than there was. Uh, that is actually, we're talking about the past. Um, all of the residents and all the staff who chose to have been vaccinated and things are very good in uh, Alpine Summit Seniors Lounge at this time. Thanks. That's great news, Council Butler. Thank you very much for the clarification. That's uplifting. Uh, uh, sorry, Mayor Island, please. Uh, thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor Wilson, and through you to uh, Mr. Given and through him to staff, I, I just wanted to express my appreciation for that, that shift in tone in the messaging. I, I think it, it really captures an important element um, and it was recognized and it is appreciated. I also wanted just to say that um, as we move forward, it, it seems to me that the, the medical consensus is not to identify the new variants by alleged country of origin, but by type or number. And there is good sense to that because although it might've been detected in one location first, it doesn't mean necessarily that it originated there. And so I think um, as we move forward, we should exercise uh, some sensitivity in that regard. But otherwise, I really appreciate the effort of, of the ECC and, and staff with respect to the messaging. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, councillors, anything further? Okay, uh, well, we'll move on to um, item six on the agenda, business arising from minutes. Uh, councillors, anything to add from the, uh, from the minutes? Nothing to add, thank you. Uh, we'll move on to uh, policy and governance. Uh, uh, item seven, uh, 7.1 council strategic priorities of update. Um, standing uh, item on all our community of the whole uh, um, agendas, uh, councillors. Anybody like to speak to that? Councillor Butler, please. Thanks very much, Deputy Mayor Wilson. We have this item sitting on our committee of the whole priorities uh, every two weeks. And I, I just think it's important from time to time that we do actually review where we stand on um, moving some of our strategic priorities forward. And so I would like to invite us to take this opportunity to do that. Um, my thinking is that the council met in uh, December and we certainly recognize that our strategic priorities is a long list and an optimistic one and that uh, COVID has uh, absolutely changed. We've been forced to change our expectations and adapt. However, we did in December, identify a few strategic priorities that we wanted to move to the forefront and try to uh, press forward with in the first few months of this year. And I think it's appropriate to check in, given that we're almost two months into the new year now, and just see where we stand on some of these. Uh, again, we understand that we're in COVID, we have a new CAO, so uh, we have to be respectful in our expectations. But there were a few things we said we wanted to work on in the first part of this year. One of them was 
to develop and to develop and acquire more housing for municipal staff. That's one of our strategic priorities. Conduct a policy level review of bylaw implement, implementation, compliance, and enforcement practices. Uh, certainly, the utility rates bylaw was an important part. Our strategic priority is improve equitable distribution of municipal service costs and needs the tax burden. So, utility rates bylaw is really important. We also recognize, while it's not part of our strat plan per se, that we have a responsibility in this flat last part of our term to review councillor remuneration. And I'm not sure that we're moving forward on that. And so I just wanted to invite council to just weigh in and uh, see where we are. Is it our intent to move some of these things forward? I think some of them are not moving forward. And if so, I think it's um, our responsibility as council to, to advance these and direct accordingly. So I'm just inviting thoughts and input from council on where we stand with these and what we want to do with some of these where I don't think we have uh, really seen advancement. I guess I would add to that little list I just ran through the obvious front runner in a sense, which is budget conversations. I confess I'm a little concerned that as we come to the end of February, uh, where we thought in December that we were just about ready to pass a budget that we're not advancing, or I'm not sure we are advancing in that. And again, it's our responsibility as council to lead. So I'm just wondering um, if other councillors uh, take a view on this or share any of my concern that we're not advancing on some of these issues. Thank you. Councillor Keller MP. Thank you, Councillor Butler. Um, I just want to update you, the Human Resources Committee, we're working on the remuneration for the uh, next council coming in. We hope to have a report to you at the Committee of the Whole uh, the second Tuesday in April. We will commit to have that report back on front of council by then. Councillors, uh, anything more to add? Uh, Councillor, oh, sorry, uh, Mayor Ireland, please. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Wilson. I, I offer my uh, thanks and appreciation to Councillor Butler for uh, bringing us back before us in the way that he has. Um, today um, is perhaps the first opportunity for um, our CAO, Mr. Given, to to see this list, or or last night, more technically, I suppose, if he was reading emails last night, um, and it it will require some in depth discussion. And I wonder whether an approach might be to schedule a specific um, strategic priorities session. I appreciate that we've tried to build it into committee of the whole, but I think this is um, worthy of a focused. Um, session where we meet as a uh, strategic priorities committee and and start to move these things forward or agree on how we will move them forward. So I, I appreciate it coming back to our attention through Councillor Butler. I, I'm not sure that um, given what is on our agenda for this morning, today is the day, although perhaps we could we could get it started. But again, as I say, Mr. Given is just seeing this for the first time but it is not something in respect to which we should uh, delay for long. Um, and maybe I've misrepresented, maybe Mr. Given has seen this earlier, I can't recall, but in any event, I, I would like very much to move forward. I'm not sure today's the day, but I would be quite willing to, to devote um, a half day specifically to this topic at any time that we can um, find time to convene as a group. Thank you, uh, Mr. Given. Uh, thanks, Deputy Mayor Wilson uh, and uh, to Councilor Butler for, for raising these items. I think one of the challenges uh, that Council is probably seeing is that um, uh, the, the lack of connection between uh, direction to administration and the strategic discussion that Council has been having. I have seen it um, in other areas where a strategic priorities list 
is a standing agenda item at council, um, but that it was a more dynamic list than maybe has been used here. Um, where council is regularly updated about progress on strategic priorities. Um, those strategic priorities having been adopted by council by resolution um, so that it is specific and known to all members of administration. So that would be sort of the, you know, if council wished today to direct administration to um, either provide updates on specific items, uh, we could certainly do that. Um, or if it um, council wish to establish certain strategic priorities by resolution um, that would uh, ensure that the entire organization and all administration were aware of the priorities that council was setting. Um, so we certainly are uh, ready and able to assist council in advancing those strategic priorities and I think some of them at least not all but some of them um, are reflected on the motion action list. Um, you know there are certainly the items related to housing that council is well aware of the discussion and the advancement of those. So there may be some areas where administration could provide a progress update towards council's strategic priorities. Um, you know, and so, and that might be more dynamic than the standing item that is here. You know, I have seen, you know, made the observation that at every meeting it's here. Um, often there's not a lot of discussion about it because it is sort of this static item from some time ago. Uh, a way to ensure that we're making progress on the things that are most important to council. Um, might be to have this uh, a little bit more of an, a dynamic uh, presentation that uh, presents uh, progress updates. Um, but in order for that to happen, um, you know, would just like some clarity from council if you'd like us to undertake that action. Um, and uh, I think that would be ideal. Certainly we could have that coming out of a, uh, a focused session as uh, Mayor Ireland suggested, uh, where council has a little bit of a focused discussion. Um, but coming out of that focus discussion, I'd suggest that we should be bringing something to committee or to council for adoption so that it is clear to the community uh, what council has adopted as strategic priorities and to the organization what council has adopted as the strategic priorities um, in a more specific manner than maybe is captured in the, uh, the 2017 uh, document. Um, yeah, Councillor Butler, please. Well, thanks very much. Um, and thanks, Councillor keller Ampi, for uh, clarifying that one item. I appreciate that. And uh, just to be clear, uh, I certainly, uh, it is not my intent at all to reflect on administration. Uh, my intent is more to point out that if Council wants direction on these items, Council needs to uh, provide direction. And that is exactly what uh, Mr. Given was saying. So I take, uh, uh, I like uh, the suggestion of Mayor Ireland. I think we should meet again soon um, at, as the Strate Strategic Priorities Committee and look at advancing some of these things. I agree that today isn't necessarily the day, uh, but I think today is the day that I wanted to bring it forward and just make sure we, as far as I can, that we are remaining focused on uh, some sort of um, strategic priority path. So uh, if we were to, outside of this meeting, set up a time in the near future for us to sit as that committee and discuss how we want to advance some of these issues, then I suggest we do so. And, um, for me, if that's the outcome of this conversation, that's entirely adequate. And thanks, everyone. I'd like to add just a little bit, and then I'll go back to you, uh, Mr. Gibbon. Uh, I'm not adverse to uh, focusing on uh, strategic goals um, and um, items that we have thought were important. Um, although I think that we need to focus on the budget and get that sorted and get that off our plate and then move forward on uh, items that uh, are a bit loftier but one of our main responsibilities is passing a budget and that needs to happen you know quite quite soon so i i don't want to add more to our plate i think all our discussion should be focused on getting a budget done where we that we committed to getting done uh, in december so um, honestly, I, I'm not adverse to meeting, but I think we have, we should not load our plate up. We should get that off our plate and then have a, a separate meal, uh, later in the year. Uh, Mr. Gibbon. Yeah. Thanks very much. Deputy Mayor Wilson. Um, I guess just for administration's clarity, appreciate, um, you know, this is about priority setting and there are multiple competing priorities as there always are on council, certainly. Um, and so if council wishes to dedicate time to this, perhaps, a uh, a motion of direction to administration to organize a strategic priorities meeting 
uh, for council uh, would be in order. That way it would be clear, you know, is, is this something that all of council wants us to undertake um, by a certain time? Or is it, um, you know, to be, to be frank, or is it a smaller number of council members uh, rather than a majority? And, and so we just do need to have that clarity um, because if, it, if there is sort of general agreement that something's important, but we're not exactly sure of when council wishes to undertake that, it can be challenging for administration. And so uh, my suggestion would be that if, uh, you know, anyone wanted to make a motion of direction to administration uh, to organize a strategic priorities meeting by a certain time, and I would leave that to council, um, you know, to, to uh, suggest when they would want to have that by. Um, that kind of motion would give us the clarity that we needed, and we would be able to uh, add that to our motion action list so that you could see um, how we're progressing to getting that work done. Councillor Demoda and then uh, Councillor Journeau. Um, I appreciate the fact that this has uh, been brought to our attention and that we're discussing it. Um, again, I'd like to make reference to a specific meeting that we had in August uh, of 2019. I believe it was the 26th where much of, much of those uh, action items were outlined. And uh, I completely understand that uh, many of those are gonna be budget related. We did tackle a, a couple of those uh, that were on that list, but I'm not sure if that specific meeting, if uh, we voted on um, to have those things moving forward officially or at a later date. But I, I do believe that there was some official uh, recording of that and uh, initial uh, an initial task list set up. Um, again, I'm not exactly sure where it's at and, and where we're at process. Many things have, uh, you know, come into fruition since then. And, and I do believe that much of uh, what could be going forward on that is budget related. So it, it's going to be part and parcel. Thank you. Councillor Journeau. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thanks, Councillor Butler, for bringing this up. I would like to suggest that we immediately arrange for a focused discussion on this with our CAO, not necessarily to prioritize the item, but just to kind of enlighten maybe the reasons why these are brought up and why we want to have them done during this council term. Uh, I think a bylaw, for example, there's three councillors who had it on the list, the bylaw, and I you know, I think our CAO, Mr. Gibbons, probably uh, has no idea what, what, what's involved. So I think that the focus discussion to, to uh, de discuss the, uh, the concerns should be arranged as soon as possible, not only for this one item that I talked about, but for, for others. And then we can, in other words, it's a big project. Let's break it down in smaller pieces and tackle them one at a time. Thank you. Councillor McGrath. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Wilson. I'm very happy to have um, a motion moved by council to arrange a strategic priorities session that is really focused and that does have measurable and achievable outcomes that we could then elevate to motion so that administration has really clear direction. So if um, no one else is willing to make that motion, I can make that motion. And then administration is clear that we would like to have a session arranged. And um, from that session, I think that we would be able to have really precise outcomes that we're hoping to achieve. Mayor Ireland and then Councilor Butler. Uh, thank you, Deputy Mayor Wilson. I, I certainly don't want to uh, preempt Councillor McGrath. I, I had just drafted out a motion similar to that, but um, also I, I thought or hoped with a little more direction um, to staff. So I'll I'll present it as something as a suggestion for a motion rather than a motion at at this time. Um, and, that suggested motion would be that um, Committee of the Whole recommend that Council adopt the strategic priorities update as reflected in the notes dated December 22nd, 2020, and direct administration to report on progress as to the items listed as appropriate 
and further that council convene as a strategic priorities committee at an early date. Um, so we could, we could give some direction to um, administration that the list of priorities that we revised in December um, to close off the year of this term um, are accepted as our short-term priorities. Administration could then report as uh, Councillor Kellergrampy did on any progress that's going on and further then that we meet um, in a session devoted to strategic priorities as a strategic priorities committee. So we could cover, I think, all three of those. And I, and I don't discount the importance of Councillor or Deputy Mayor Wilson's comments about the budget, but I think that those discussions must necessarily happen either in this venue, that is Committee of the Whole, or at a regular council meeting in any event. Um, so that, that should um, happen in the ordinary course in any event. But this I see as a separate um, strategic priorities committee meeting that can be convened with council and the CAO, and we can then set some further direction as necessary. So that would be my, my suggested motion, but I don't want to be in conflict with the suggestions by Councillor McGrath. Uh, Councillor McGrath. I would accept Mayor Ireland's motion as, as the motion being presented for this subject. Okay, uh, anything further before I call the question, Councillor Butler and then Mayor Ireland? Um, thanks, I, I'm fine with that. I just wanted to, again, be clear that I think any direction that we give to administration at this point should be very minimal in nature. And I, as long as we understand that the direction that Mayor Ireland is suggesting in the motion uh, should not require anything more than uh, an update on those items from administration, even this that update is simply that no action has yet been taken. Uh, let's not be uh, loading actions onto administration so that they feel pressured to come back and say, oh, well, we're doing this and this and this. Um, very little at this point is required. It's up to council to give uh, direction when we want direction on any of those specific items. But as long as that's our understanding, I'm very happy with the wording of that motion. Mayor Ireland? Um, one hesitation um, I have, and I, I leave this mostly for uh, Councillor Butler um, because he, um, he is the author of the notes um, and some of them are just notes of discussion. It is the end, the, the priorities moving forward that encapsulate, uh, I think the decisions from the December 22nd um, meeting. But I, I wonder whether Councillor Butler is comfortable with all or just part of those notes becoming part of the public record. And so we could narrow them down to the to the operative clause at the end, and I don't think that creates any difficulty. But perhaps putting the whole thing in is overstated. Um, but they are his notes, um, and he might want to comment on that. Go ahead. Thank you. I, I, I'm uh, not sure. I prepared to accept them as being my notes, except that I agreed to pen them, but council agreed. But yeah, I, uh, that, that's a very good point. Um, I left out, for example, a couple of things that we have, have worked on. There's a note about um, some discussion prior to the last intergovernmental meeting, which we've already had, so I didn't mention that. And I, I think I had distilled the areas where I have concern to those that I specifically mentioned a few minutes ago. So that includes bylaw, um, implementation, compliance and enforcement, municipal staff housing, the utility fees issue, council remuneration. I think I didn't mention, but on that list was paid parking. 
And, and so there's an example of an issue where I know we are moving forward. And I guess I didn't mention it because it's something that I know we are moving forward on. But I think that encapsulates the specific action items that we came out of that meeting agreeing that we would try to move forward in the near term. So perhaps that's helpful. Thank you. Mr. Given. Yeah, thanks, Deputy Mayor Wilson. Council, if it might be helpful, um, perhaps uh, I could work with uh, Councillor Butler just to do a bit of a review of those meeting notes and the items, presenting that, you know, reformatting slightly and presenting them in a bit more specific uh, format that would be appropriate for coming forward to uh, to, to council uh, for consideration and, and, and sort of formal adoption, because I think it is reasonable for council to say, these are the things that are important to us that we want to be working on with the time that we have left in office. I, I think that that makes really good sense. I would be happy to assist Councillor Butler and sort of really, you know, reformatting and making sure that they are specific. Um, and so if council, um, you know, if council, I think the direction to administration could be as simple as um, directing administration, um, reformat the December 22nd strategic priorities and present at a future council meeting. Um, you know, that, that would be, I think, simple enough. Uh, we understand the intent would allow some latitude for me to work with Councillor Butler to make sure that we captured all the priority items. We would present them back to you. And if we got, if it, if it accurately reflects what council wanted to work on, that would be great. You could adopt it. Um, if there was something amiss and you wanted to amend it or refocus it, then you would have that opportunity at that time as well. But it would be a more, um, yeah, uh, um, yeah, just a, a bit more um, directly formatted and specific rather than the discussion that we might be having now, which is council members trying to remember which items were important to whom. Um, uh, but I'm sure that between Councilor Butler and I would be able to format that in a way that would be actionable for council. Uh, Mayor Island. Thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor Wilson. It's wonderful to have a CAO who's used to making motions, uh, apparently. Um, so that that is um, excellent advice. And so um, I would um, then suggest a change to my suggested motion, um, which would be that um, Council direct administration to reformat the strategic priorities update as reflected in the note stated December 22nd, 2020. Direct administration to report on progress as to items listed as appropriate, and that council convene as a strategic priorities committee at an early date. Does that then cover all of that? We haven't yet adopted um, those minutes, but they will be reformatted. So there is something to come forward that we can adopt. Deputy Mayor Wilson uh, to Mayor Ireland, I would just suggest that it might be helpful if um, your definition of an early date might be tomorrow where somebody else on council's definition of an early date might be March 30th. So it, it might be useful just to, to add a little um, specificity there, just so that we all have a clear understanding. It is now the end of um, February. Um, could we say at an early date, not later than the end of March? I, I would say that's certainly the kind of specificity um, and open to whatever council chooses is an early date, but that, that certainly uh, gives administration a goalpost to work within. Is everybody happy with that? Thank you. So I'm a bit uh, lost. Are we, we're, are we passing a motion at this point? Um, Mayor Ireland, could you? Assist? Well, I, I think uh, Mr. Given indicated that uh, administration would appreciate clear direction. That's as clear as we can manage for right now. So yes, I think um, a motion to direct administration is appropriate. And, we can, I, I won't repeat the, the entire motion, but it's it's before us. I think we have a, a record of it. So I would I would invite um, you as the chair to, to call a question on that motion. Okay, uh, is everybody clear with the question? And in the direction that we'll uh, be passing out to administration? Uh, 
Thanks, Deputy Mayor Wilson. Certainly, administration is clear on the action. Just uh, for the recording, Secretary, just to make sure, are we assigning that motion? Is Councilor McGrath, were you making that motion? Uh, or is that Mayor Ireland? Just, just so that we make sure we get it right in the minutes. That was Mayor Ireland's motion. Okay, I'll call the question. All in favor? That's uh, carried. Thank you. Okay, uh, anything further on uh, item seven, policy and governance? We'll move on to, uh, oh, sorry, Councillor Butler. I just wanted to thank Council and Mr. Gibbon for uh, uh, what I thought was, uh, in the end, a uh, good conversation and uh, a good step forward. So I appreciate uh, your uh, engaging. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, moving on to item eight, brief updates. Uh, 8.1 is the Connaught site servicing. And uh, we have, uh, I think, the operations team uh, presenting. Uh, pass that to Mr. Gibbon, and then you can direct it. That's great. Thanks very much, uh, Deputy Mayor Wilson. Yeah, certainly I will be supported by the uh, operations team. Uh, Mr. Greathead is here, um, but I'll uh, introduce the report for discussion and first uh, also take ownership of uh, a typo that is uh, in the second, third, uh, final page of the report where it talks about uh, servicing just parcel GB, um, sort of a, as, a, as a minimal phase, and that should, as council is probably where, uh, read G, parcel GC. So uh, when we get to that point, I'll just sort of uh, acknowledge up front. So the recommendation uh, here from administration is that council approve the installation of utility services to all three parcels, GC, GB, and GA in 2021. Um, the council further provide direction to administration to develop appropriate borrowing bylaws required to fund those utility services to a maximum of $3.647 million and present those bylaws at a future council, regular council meeting. And thirdly, to allocate $350,250 in the 2021 budget for the upfront project costs for the Cannot Drive Affordable Apartments subject to the approval of the federal grant application. Um, so that is the action that we're here uh, bringing forward to committee um, for direction to administration and, and potentially forwarding on to council. Um, as council is well aware, um, Jasper uh, regularly has systemic housing issues um, with a, related to affordability, um, given the setting within a national park and the relatively limited land base. Um, a recent analysis by Parks Canada identified that since 2017, just 46 new housing units have been constructed in the municipality, and at the same time, 63 units were converted to condominiums, uh, which potentially had uh, the impact of reducing the overall rental supply. Uh, the federal government has introduced the Rapid Housing Initiative, which is a $1 billion grant program to address urgent housing needs um, through the construction of permanently affordable housing. The intent of the program is that um, units funded under that would be available within 12 months of funding agreements being completed. Um, and that program deadline uh, for application was December 31st. The Jasper Community Housing Corporation, uh, with the support of Collier's project leaders, did submit an application to the RHI proposing to construct the Cannot Drive Affordable Apartments on a portion of the GC lot. Uh, that project uh, proposes a 40 unit apartment building. Um, and again, to be clear, this is a project of the Jasper Community Housing Corporation, not the municipality. Um, uh, the 40 unit building uh, was intended to be modular in construction containing 32 one bedroom units and eight two bedroom suites. Um, and again, the go forward on that project is subject to or contingent upon receiving the federal grant. Additionally, um, also as a result of the advocacy of the JCHC, Parks Canada has issued a public opportunity for a right to lease the adjacent lot, parcel GB, um, and that has been out to market uh, and I think our general understanding is that Parks is engaged with a private party uh, who may wish to develop on the GB lot. All of this to say that if any of those housing opportunities, either the JCHC project on the GB parcel or any private development on the GB parcel were to move forward, they would require the installation of municipal in, uh, infrastructure services such as water, wastewater and stormwater management. Um, in alignment with Council's previous direction to identify opportunities to move forward with that, um, Council has worked with uh, Colliers 
and uh, Altera Engineering to provide the following options. Um, and in essence, um, council can see that just servicing parcel GC would cost approximately $1.8 million, while servicing all three sites at the same time would cost $3.647 million. The incremental difference of, um, of, I guess the order, the value of the um, efficiencies of scale of doing all three sites uh, sees a savings of just over $200,000, $211,000 is essentially the efficiency of servicing all three sites at the same time. The value of servicing all three sites at the same time, though, is not just in the efficiency of, of cost savings from uh, uh, economies of scale. It is also in reducing disruption um, as um, each phase will require um, disruption across Connaught Drive as services would have to cross Connaught. Um, and so doing that all at once rather than doing that over multiple years uh, obviously would be preferable for the community. And then finally, uh, if council proceeded with only servicing lot GC, that would mean that the development opportunities on the adjacent GB parcel, where there appears to be private interest, would remain limited. Uh, so for that reason, administration is recommending uh, council move forward with servicing all three sites uh, at the cost of uh, that $3.647 million. Um, for council's information, uh, at approximate numbers, um, a 25-year debenture, of $3.6 million is approximately $195,000 per year uh, in, in uh, payments on that debenture. Um, there are some preliminary design concepts that are contained in the package. There's obviously lots of other information contained in the package and myself and the operations team are happy to answer any questions council might have. That's great. Uh... Uh, Mr. Given, thank you for that. Uh, Councillor Butler, I think I saw your hand up first. Anybody else? I'm looking at the screen on the list. Thank you very much, Deputy yeah. Mayor. Uh, the first thing I wanted to do is just congratulate administration. Th th this is a, just an excellent report. Um, it really clarifies and puts into as firm as possible terms a range of conversations that we've been having over a period of time. So I, I think it's extremely well put together and congratulations on that. And thank you. I really only have one question. I understand everything I think I need to understand in order to really properly debate the options in front of us, which will mostly, I guess, happen at a regular meeting, but I'm a little unclear on the third bullet under recommendations. What is the 350,200 50 what what money is that and what's it what will it do for us and just somehow came a little unclear came, came out of my reading a little unclear on that mr given thank you sure and i'm happy to be aided by mr greathead if he's able but there are uh certain costs in terms of permitting um site clearing and other costs that uh council would essentially uh it, it is a difficult situation as council knows because we haven't received confirmation of the grant. Um, and in order to move forward with development of that site in 2021 for the apartment project, to be clear for the apartment project, uh, the site would need to be cleared of the uh, existing trees. There would need to be certain uh, wildlife studies that would happen on that site. And we have a relatively short window of time within which to do those, uh, those that preparation um, as a result of the Migratory Bird Act um, and other wildlife concerns uh, in collaboration with Parks Canada. And who I should say, Parks Canada through all parts of this process have been, uh, I think, quite supportive uh, moving forward with something where there's less certainty than I think everyone is used to um, and a great deal of pressure. Um, but so Councillor Butler, the, the question that you have there is, um, that those are those upfront costs to ready the site for development of the apartment. And essentially what we're seeking here is council's confirmation that should we receive the grant, council is ready to uh, put forward some of those costs that would need to be borne uh, early this spring, uh, early summer, perhaps before we have received the grant monies um, or before we have passed a borrowing bylaw for the construction of the apartment building. They really are the site prep costs that would need to come up front if we receive the grant and are moving forward with the construction of the apartment. Mr. Greathead, did I get that pretty close? Uh, yes, sir, that's exactly, um, it, it's, there's a lot of uh, moving parts and we've got such a tight window to hit that we're gonna need 
um, a budget. Uh, so we're not taking leaps of faith on any of this um, as we're going forward. But, you know, uh, for the site, uh, just even site clearing, we're going to need a sketch of the plan of the area of disturbance that's intended. Uh, so that way we can get the permitting of the trees. Um, I understand some of the tree permits you may even want, um, you know, uh, a species specific list of uh, the trees that are going to be impacted. Um, so that, you know, that requires us to hire an arborist and, and, you know, there's an awful lot of steps. So this is kind of um, to make sure that we don't miss the window, because if we don't complete this work consecutively, you know, with haste, uh, awareness that there's many different facets that we're going to have to pull off through this project, um, it won't be successful. So that's, that's where we're at and that's what this ask is for. And thank you. Thank you, Councillor McGrath. Thank you very much, Deputy Mayor Wilson. I'm really impressed with the way this has been put forward and the way this is being reported today on our agenda. It's very thorough. It leaves me with very little questions and lots and lots of comfort and certainty. I want to thank administration for their foresight and for their thoroughness in looking at all of the possibilities in which the JCHC needs to have in place to be successful should we be awarded the Rapid Housing Initiative grant. I'm really excited to be at this point. And the only question that I have, I'm, I'm aware of GC and GB, is it likely that GA will also be developed? GA is something that I haven't heard a lot about since I have been on council and on the JCHC. So I'm just curious as to the likelihood of needing services or requiring services on GA, though I understand it's needed on GC and GB. Mr. Gibbon. Yeah, thanks, uh, Deputy Mayor Wilson, to Councillor McGrath's question. Uh, yes, administration is uh, does not foresee an immediate term need for development uh, or development pressures on GA, just to be very clear, and I'm sure that that would be a concern in the community um, if there was a perception um, that there would be significant changes to all three sites uh, in a very short period of time. Uh, so to be clear, uh, Parks has not moved forward with uh, looking uh, presenting GA as a potential leasable site. Um, it's still held by parks. Um, the reason that it is included in the recommendation really is uh, uh, infrastructure design uh, in nature um, in terms of the requirements of looping for water services, as well as some of the limitations of the existing services down um, the connection on pine. Um, there are some very old uh, clay tile pipe uh, services for uh, storm sewer in there that were installed in the 50s. Um, it's been identified that those are not appropriate for adding additional stress and strain on. Um, they can continue to operate just fine as they are, um, but they're not something that we would want to add extra volume to. Um, and uh, there are also concerns about the uh, volume of water that would be available through that, si that style of connection through pine. Um, so it really just means that for the effectiveness of the infrastructure, the appropriate looping and uh, design is to go uh, past GA. Um, it does have the added benefit that if at some point in the long term future, there was an interest uh, from the community in developing on GA, that would be possible. But that is not the intent uh, of this uh, design this year. It really is more of a technical matter. And that's why you see it reflected as it is. Thank you. Uh, may I jump in for one second? Or, uh, well, I'm going to take the uh, the uh, privilege to jump in. Uh, I, unfortunately, uh, can, I don't uh, have the same um, comfort and certainty as Council McGrath. I am a little bit more skeptical that we can achieve all this within 12 months. But, uh, you know, with that cyn cynicism I, uh, from being involved in uh, development projects, I, I wouldn't uh, drag my feet. I think that uh, we should charge ahead and, and, and see where we get. Uh, I, I see um, Mr. Greathead's challenges ahead of him, um, but I, I, that's why I feel that we should, you know, get, get this going as quick as possible. I don't think there is any delay um, or we should have any delay in um, approving this and I, I support it wholeheartedly. I think we should go ahead with all three parcels, um, you know, with the savings that, uh, that's involved, but also uh, the disruption of uh, cannot. I think uh, if we're doing it, we do it all, and then we're not back at the table here um, two years from now when there's a new development uh, or a, 
a request for a new development uh, on uh, say GB or, or GC, so, or GA, sorry. Um, so anyway, I, my support is fully behind it, although I do have some reservations uh, with, uh, with the deadlines, but we'll, we'll see where we, where we get to this year. Um, sorry, I missed, uh, I know count, or sorry, uh, Mr. Greathead, and then we'll go to uh, Mayor Island, please. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Um, just anecdotally, if I can um, offer uh, just some observances, is that we've only got a few parcels, large uh, parcels of land left, and they're all towards the east um, north end of town. Um, and they're they're gone, they're spoken for, um, you know, quite often with the developers and, and in the discussions, you know, I do get comments and saying, oh, too bad, you know, we couldn't do anything more on Kanawha, um, you know, and, and that's prohibitive. So I'm not, I, you know, I would not want to say that, um, that we have anybody ready to build or develop on GB or GA, but I'm sure that it would open up the opportunities for further growth and, and further development if those sites were serviced. So that's just um, an anecdotal observation. And uh, again, thank you. Mayor Island. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Wilson. I, I am um, certainly inclined to favor um, sort of the full meal deal and, and service all three of those parcels um, at this opportunity if we can. But I'm drawn to a question that I think Councillor Butler asked um, last session, and I'm not sure that I have yet understood an answer, and that is with respect to looping, um, if we serviced all three lots, would the connection at Willow and the tie into the existing um, line at Hazel be sufficient, or or would we also need the tie-ins at Pine and Spruce? If we could do all three with one disruption of Connaught um, and then tie into the existing at Hazel, um, that is further support in my mind for doing all three together. Uh, maybe those intermediate tie-ins and looping is required in any event, and I'm I'm not necessarily worried about the incremental um, increased cost, but I am worried about disruption. And so if one large loop with one crossing of Connaught can service all three lots or all three parcels, um, I think that is a, a factor certainly in, in favor of doing all three now with minimal disruption. Mr. Gibbon. Yeah, uh, Your Worship, to your question, uh, I believe it has to do with uh, protection for, for, sorry, volumes for fire protection. Uh, Mr. Greathead can confirm that, but uh, the addition here, and it is a bit difficult to see on the renderings, uh, but there are uh, circles along Connaught uh, that you can kind of just barely make out on the, uh, on the water, um, the full scale uh, implementation of water services. Uh, those represent fire hydrants. And my understanding is that those uh, connections uh, provide the a volume that would be required to service fire protection, which would be particularly important for higher density multifamily housing, um, such as where it was being proposed here. Uh, Mr. Greathead, I don't know if you want to add additional detail to that. Uh, thank you, Mr. Given. Uh, the line that runs parallel to Connaught, um, it's proposed to be a 300 millimeter uh, line, so it's a one foot diameter. Um, the crossings coming into it, um, you know, spruce, pine, uh, they're between uh, six and eight inch. So there's, um, in the math, it's not just not two six inch um, pipes meet the same volume as um, a 12 inch pipe. It's, you know, uh, the math comes in, it's like 3.14 of that size if everything's uh, perfect. Also, if there were to be a break on one section of line, we don't have redundancy for back feeding. So a, um, if we are only relying on crossing at Willow and at Hazel, if we have a problem at, the, at one on that line at all, um, we could be disrupting the entire section. And again, the density that's proposed, we could be seeing up to 750 um, residents on those three parcels uh, once it's fully developed. So that those are all considerations um, and that those um, 
this is definitely uh, following best practice um, for the service and for the supply of, um, of water to these sites. Well, I, I certainly appreciate that answer. I, I thank you for that. And I, and I thank Councillor Butler for having raised the question in, in the first place. It took me a week or more to get it all sorted out in my mind. If I might, um, Deputy Mayor Wilson, I, I had just um, one other or two other comments about um, the report. Um, the report indicates that the federal government has allocated a billion dollars to the Rapid Housing Initiative for the creation of up to 3,000 um, units of affordable housing across the country. By my math, which is always a bit suspect, that's $333,000 per unit. Um, is that kind of within the ballpark of what we are proposing? Um, it, it seems um, excessive when you're building um, units that we have contemplated um, at, at $333,000 per unit for 40, we're looking at $13.3 million. Um, is that ballpark? Where do we line up um, in terms of efficiencies? If, if that is the standard that the federal government has set, um, and I, I have no idea why, um, they would think we could only get 3,000 units with a billion dollars, but where do we where do we think we fit in in that general scheme? Well, uh, Deputy Mayor Wilson, to Mayor Ireland's question, and Councillor Butler may have a, a view on this as well. He was uh, very involved in the submission of the the uh, project, the submission of the project from JCHC uh, before my time arriving here. Um, but I, and so I'm going from rough numbers that that project is approximately a twelve million dollar uh, all in project, including land value. Um, and so that is very roughly speaking, you know, 12 million divided by 40 units is 300,000. And so I would suggest that by the time a project purchases land uh, to go forward, which would may be required in many cases, um, that, that that number is not um, completely beyond the pale. Um, and, you know, probably with some variance, uh, I think the program proposes some renovation of properties as a concept, um, development of new properties. Um, but as you can see, by the time you add land value and other associated costs outside of just the bare bones construction of the, the uh, facility, um, you can be pushing that $300,000, $330,000 would not be difficult. Thank you for that. Um, oh, Cal uh, Councillor Journal, please. A bit of an aside question uh, on this project. I would not be supportive of extending the services beyond parcel GC. I think it's gonna be a long ways before we get, unless you have a very active discussion to GB, um, I certainly wouldn't wanna go beyond extending it to GA either. Uh, I don't think it's fair to the taxpayers to saddle in with, that, with the, uh, that cost that may not be used for a long, 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 long time. Um, and my second part of the question is, these services, if we were to extend it to GB, are they recoverable from the developer? Thank you. Mr. Gibbon. Sure. Uh, yeah. Thanks, Councillor Janot, for the question. Uh, certainly, there would be a discussion uh, still to come should Council choose to direct administration to move forward with these actions. Um, we would bring back, um, if there was a proposal for development on GB, what an appropriate share of these costs would be uh, for the development, what an appropriate method of that contribution uh, would look like. Um, so that is absolutely a conversation that is not uh, described here. Council General, you've, you've uh, very acutely picked up on the fact that we would have to have that conversation still. Um, but administration would be proposing that, uh, of course, if there is private development that happens that is able to benefit from those services, then they should make some kind of contribution towards that. And that would be a decision that council would be involved in, of course. Um, but just to reiterate uh, the intent behind administration's recommendation of servicing all three, uh, in the case of extending to GB, it would be to enable that private development, which we understand there is some current discussion around. 
And with respect to going past GA, it really is a uh, design requirement to ensure that the infrastructure that we do put in the ground can service the intensity of development that is going to happen uh, through these multifamily uh, buildings. So the, the reason for going past GA is, is technical in nature to make sure that we have the capacity in the system that's required and the redundancy as mentioned by Mr. Greathead. And absolutely council will have an opportunity to have a discussion about what amount any private development on GP should pay towards these services. Yeah, and to add to that, I, I would, I would kind of uh, suggest that th these lots would be very undesirable to a developer. So yes, you're very true, councillors, you know, that they may not be developed for some time, but they'll be de developed quite a bit sooner if the if the services are there and, and they're ready ready to, to roll. If you're looking at a lot and realizing that you have to spend millions in uh, services to start your project, I, I, I just can't see anybody coming to the table. And I think that's a challenge uh, currently. So I think we've got to make them desirable and, uh, and, and developers will come and, and, uh, and will build, but without the services, I, I, I just can't see it. Geez, sorry, I'm close muted. Councillor Journeau, McGrath, and then Butler, please. Uh, so, so I'm not clear here, but I understand that we're in the business of business development for developers, or are we just putting services to recover our costs? Or are we trying to put uh, a proposal to attract developers? In other words, there's a cost to the taxpayers here for develop to attract developers? I, I don't. Think that that's appropriate i think that uh, lucrative the market here for rental is lucrative enough and i don't think we have to provide any taxpayers money on a business development uh, proposal or aspect or housing well just in response i think uh, housing is the uh, necessity here and uh, one project is not going to solve the the problem we have limited land and that land should be ready ready to uh, to develop it for housing that, that may alleviate some of our housing crunch. Um, Councilor McGrath. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Wilson. I'd like to weigh in on this debate. When we were elected for this term of council, the single most important issue facing the community of Jasper was housing. And this is our first opportunity as this council to ensure that housing has a possibility of being built in our community. Servicing GA, GB, and GC is the first step and a necessity to making sure that any housing is built in the community of Jasper. And this is the least I can do to ensure that the utilities are set up for future success, particularly to affordable housing. This affordable housing initiative is absolutely necessary. There are many people needing affordable housing in our community. I'm in touch with these people on a regular basis. This project is so, so important to move forward and having the underground infrastructure there for it to move forward is step one. And I'm really happy to be here. Thank you. Sorry, I think it was Councilor Butler. Thank you. A couple of points uh, that I'm picking up on relative to the conversations that have proceeded. And the first is on that question of recovery. I, I think Mr. G Mr. Gibbons is quite rightly in a sense, trying to, we need to keep our conversation for the moment, I think, uh, focused on priorities for development. But Mr. Given is entirely leaving open the conversation for future of um, to what extent council would choose to recover or expect, hope and attempt to recover some of this these infrastructure costs. And there's two ways that communities do that all the time to absolutely normal ways. And they apply whether someone was building on newly serviced land or on existing service land. There's one, one is through offsite levies. And then in this particular case where we kind of have a new neighborhood open up, we could use a local improvement levy. And one of the advantages to having the services in the ground, we would know exactly what our costs were because we would already have spent the money. And then we would be faced with the decision as to how and to what extent would we expect to recuperate some of those costs when market housing, as, as distinct from um, community housing, 
is put in. So we we absolutely have the wherewithal to recuperate, honestly, whatever proportion we as council or a future council would, would decide we should do so. And then of course, it comes down to a question of whether overall with the offsite levy or local improvement levy put into place, whether that creates an attractive package for a developer to look at on presumably GB or GA. So I think we can deal with the question of recuperating costs. And while Mr. Given doesn't want to position council as to what our expectation would be, I'm certainly prepared to say at this point that I would um, have the expectation of having that conversation about what proportion of these costs we would choose to make recoverable. And then I, I wanted to make a point or provide some insight into the question of do we do GC only or GC and GB or all three sites. And I do respect the thinking that suggests that if we're gonna be in the ground, let's do the whole thing and set ourselves up for future success on those sites. But I also am cautioned by the question of what is realistically the near medium and long-term demand for high density housing, because these sites are identified as being most suitable for high density housing. So we're looking at if under the RHI program of putting 40 units on half of GC, probably there'd be room then or expectation of another 40 units of community housing there for a total of 80. Parcel GB is a little bit smaller, but could still have sort of the same order of magnitude expectation of development. So even on GC and GB, we have the potential for something up to as many as 160 high density units there. And at one point, we will face the question of how much demand is there really for that kind of housing? There's a lot of demand for housing, but how much demand is there for essentially apartment housing? And there are other areas of town that the uh, Community Housing Corporation has identified as being suitable for other kinds of housing and that there are also other sorts of housing that we have talked about uh, being needed in the community, more family-oriented housing and seniors-oriented housing, neither of which is perhaps the best sort of housing to be looking at here. So I feel pretty cautious about uh, one phase, two phase, or all three phases, and it's the one thing I'm going to be thinking about a lot over the next you know, before this question actually comes to us is, do we realistically think that sort of in the future of maybe um, 20 year window of opportunity that we would be likely to see housing developing as far down Kanawha as GA? That's really the question that I find is hard to put my finger on. Okay, uh, anything further at this point? Mr. Given. Yeah, thanks very much, Councillor Wilson. So, you know, um, just in terms of process from here on out, uh, administration is coming forward with this recommendation. You'll see that it's formatted in our uh, approach of committee recommend council. Um, so we would be looking for a motion today um, that would forward this to next week's council meeting. Um, if council doesn't make a motion today uh, to forward this on, then it will would not go there. Um, you know, we basically are looking to see and appreciate that uh, council members may need to consider the information that they've received, the discussion that's been had today, and to hear from the community. Um, the intent would be that uh, you could forward this item so it will appear on next week's council, regular council agenda, um, but that you would still have an opportunity to consider over the week's time um, whether or not you might, uh, how you might vote at that regular council meeting. But administration is looking for this to be forward, uh, recommended forward on to council. Okay, councillors, do I have a motion? Oh, uh, Councilor Butler, before I request a motion. I was responding proactively to, for, to your request for a motion, and uh, I will move that council committee of the hall recommend that council, and I would include all three bullet points under the recommendation in my motion. And I will make that motion and my only comment to add to what we already have discussed is that I, I'm making that motion and I, I like the way it's worded. We will be recommending to ourselves that we improve as council, that we approve 
installation of utilities to all three sites and that a borrowing bylaw for that full amount be prepared. But we're certainly able to amend and reduce um, our ask or our recommendation when we debate it in public. So I'm making a motion in that spirit without saying that I, even I myself am necessarily in favor of servicing all three uh, parcels at this time. As I said, I, I myself am still need to put some thinking into the specifics of those options. So I'll make that motion with leave of council. Thank you. Thank you for that, Councillor Butler. Uh, anything further before I call the question? All in favor? Uh, against? Uh, sorry, that's uh, six in favor, one against. Uh, carried. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, we'll move on to item 8.2, wastewater treatment plant, uh, RFP. Uh, we have an attachment as well, and uh, Mr. Gibbon, I'm sure you'll start that one off for us. Sure, uh, a very brief introduction for me. We do have support here uh, from the other side advisory or consultants who council heard uh, from last week about this process. Uh, Mr. Greathead is here as well as the operations team on the utility side, uh, but we have in front of you a recommendation that council direct administration uh, to enter into negotiations uh, with a provider for a 10 year operating contract for the wastewater treatment plant. Um, I'll turn it over to Mr. Greathead again, just for council. This is uh, um, here for committee to recommend forward to council. If council next week chooses to direct administration to uh, enter into those, nego those negotiations, excuse me, uh, we would return uh, ultimately with a operating contract for council approval and adoption. Uh, but Mr. Greathead, anything else that you wanted to highlight? Uh, thank you. Um, yeah, I just want a, a bit of the background is uh, we had um, EPCOR uh, hired as our um, kind of a relief operator for a one year period. And we ended up extending the contract for another six months just to make, uh, to make sure that we could get through the RFP process um, and uh, be ready uh, to have it out um, and a transition period, uh, orderly transition period. Um, as we move into a longer operating uh, contract, longer term operating contract, sorry. Um, during the last year, uh, we started off with a um, operational facility review and uh, we had invested in a significant amount of money into um, the procedures, um, the lab processes, the lab equipment, SCADA upgrades. Um, we've uh, got redundancy in most of our equipment now. Um, and it did a, a, a really thorough workup. So um, the plant is, is probably in as good of a shape um, as it possibly can be uh, for a handover process. So that's something that we focused on within administration and to make sure that we were at this place. So um, we uh, had put this out on APC uh, for con um, the contract out. Um, we had some, uh, really good proponents, uh, also even say world-class proponents um, in uh, the industry uh, bidding on this work. And um, throughout the whole um, RFP and um, evaluation process, which Dave from the other side had mentioned and gone through last week, um, the team is uh, recommending um, that Aquaterra be the uh, preferred, or it is the preferred proponent after the um, scoring and um, administration is seeking um, council approval to enter into negotiations as we um, develop uh, a long-term operating contract. Uh, what we're hoping to do is um, actually have the contract work through in the next few weeks, um, finalized by mid-May for council ratification, and uh, start a transition period from June 1st and complete that over by the end of June and uh, hopefully, um, you know, have everything in place and ready to go seamlessly uh, by, by July 1st. So this is a process that we've been um, heavily invested in. Um, I'm actually quite uh, pleased with how um, the process went. Uh, it was thorough. Um, and I believe that we covered all the concerns that have been brought up uh, regarding the operations and, and uh, environmental um, concerns with the wastewater treatment plant. 
and um, just for council discussion at this point. Thank you. Thank you for that, Mr. Greathead. Uh, Councillors, uh, Councillor McGrath, please. Thank you very much, Deputy Mayor Wilson. I have a couple questions. Um, when it comes to the contract being before us, will we have a chance to see the operational costs in comparison to what they've been in the past? And um, one thing I'm specifically interested in is the 10 year operating contract and the possibility of us considering to bring this service in house eventually. Um, I'm not sure that we're there yet. And I agree that moving in this direction is the right direction for the municipality today, but I would love to see the, the feasibility of Jasper municipality running the wastewater treatment plant on our own, as we've discovered that we ultimately carry the diligence no matter what. So if it's that, and it comes down to our legal responsibility on our shoulders, no matter who's operating the plant, I think that there would be um, a significant interest of mine anyways, to see what the cost comparisons would be of us eventually working to a point where we could potentially see this run in-house. Mr. Gibbon. Yeah, thanks, Deputy Mayor Wilson. Uh, certainly, administration will present to council uh, at the time that we have a negotiated contract a comparison of the cost of that contract uh, with what the operating has been over the course of the last year and was previously. So, council uh, is aware of that. I think that's a, a would be a regular practice anyhow. Um, and with respect to the concept of essentially insourcing the service, um, that is something that uh, if council wished to consider would be possible. Um, I would imagine that as with any services contract, there would be uh, provisions for if either party wanted to end that contract. Um, council would, uh, you know, and so we can certainly identify what those terms are so that council can be aware of them. Um, I would just suggest that um, there you uh, were presented last week with the uh, level of um, due diligence that went into the preparation of the RFP. And I would suggest that any consideration of the municipal capacity to deliver the same service should be done with the same level of due diligence and business case analysis. Um, I would uh, further suggest that that's not a, a short process um, and would be one that would require an, an investment of resources. And so if council wished to undertake that kind of action, uh, would, would probably require some time to do so um, and uh, a dedication of budget funds to be able to do that kind of analysis, um, which all sort of leads to say that uh, we are probably not in a position by the end of the current operating contract uh, to have anything for council. Um, and that's why administration's recommendation is to enter into this operational agreement. Thank you. Uh, Mayor Ireland, please. Uh, thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor Wilson, and uh, through you to Mr. Given and uh, to staff. Again, I, I read this report today um, in light of the uh, presentation a week ago. And again, I, I offer my thanks and appreciation for the, for the thoroughness of the, of the RFP. Um, when we do see the contract, um, we will get a sense of what sort of values we're looking at and this upfront expenditure of of time and effort to do it right is, is really appreciated. So I, I thank you for that. Um, I do note though that um, on the second page of today's report under scoring components, there is a reference to having made an assessment of the proponents um, qualifications, experience and historical performance record. But on the evaluation matrix, on page three, um, there's no indication of any scoring. And that seems to me to be a fairly vital component and may well have factored in somehow, but it's not revealed. And when I look at the evaluation matrix, the preferred proponent um, wins on cost, but is second place on environmental stewardship and technical ability. And so I, I just wonder how those other factors um, in, in principle, historical performance record has been factored into this and whether that um, 
is excluded because it can't be made part of the public record or, um, or, or left just to imagine that the, the diligence of our staff, and I don't doubt that it was there, plus the, the diligence of the consultant came to this conclusion, but uh, it, it just seems to me that the, the record is somewhat lacking in, in that regard. Deputy Mayor Wilson to uh, Mayor Ireland's uh, question. So yes, Mayor Ireland, um, all of those items and some others were essentially components of environmental stewardship and technical ability. They're presented here in a um, consolidated fashion uh, to ensure that we're not disclosing um, or negatively reflecting in any specific area on any individual proponent. Uh, the intent here is to show council the rolled up combined scores um, and, uh, you know, there is a, a, some sensitivity uh, to suggesting and, and to be very clear, all of the submissions that were received were quality submissions, um, but we didn't wish to um, get in, become overly specific, which might lead to a wrong impression on any one specific area. Um, the intent here is to rather reflect the overall weighting, which, uh, as Council can see, 80% of the weight was placed on the uh, proponents, um, environmental stewardship and technical ability. So really, can they do this job and can they do it in a environmentally safe and uh, um, effective manner? Um, and so that's where 80% of the points were awarded. Uh, and then the 20% was on cost. And so um, as you can imagine, the difference in cost needed to make up uh, for being slightly lower in uh, scoring in environmental uh, stewardship and technical ability would have to be fairly significant given that cost was only 20% weighting. So just to suggest to council that, that the scoring system was intended to make sure that we didn't get just the lowest cost provider, uh, it's only 20% of the weight, um, but a significant difference in cost um, was able to tip somebody who was relatively equivalent in capability uh, into the lead. Thank you very much for that explanation. And I, I, I can now draw the connection between um, the, the scoring components that are listed on page two and the, and the matrix on page three. And I was, I was challenged to do that on my own. So I appreciate the explanation. Thank you. Mr. Greta. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Um, the uh, also, I'll say it's it's a compiled, but it's also a very condensed list of how we went through. And I think that the um, the scoring um, peaks and valleys. I think that speaks more to the um, care of the um, uh, evaluating uh, committee. Uh, to go through this and look at this through different lenses. And so that, you know, with it, with all of our uh, diverse backgrounds and, and, and aspects of this, um, you know, all the members of the committee are, are solidly um, recommending Aquaterra at the end of this exercise. So it's, it's one of those, you know, very collaborative, um, highly debatable, uh, you know, evaluation process. You know, we, we had some, uh, some pretty uh, in-depth discussions and this was not, something that was, um, you know, decided um, over a lunch break. You know, this is this took many, many hours. Let's research, let's have this. We, we did have further follow-up meetings um, to further refine the responses from the proponent um, when we had questions. And, you know, if, if there was concerns that were, you know, that we wanted addressed or we wanted more information. Each proponent, um, you know, that made it to the preferred proponent's le level had a chance to speak to that. So, and I think that's all I'd like to add at that. Uh, Councilor Butler. Thank you. And thanks, Mr. Greathead for that. I just wanted to probe a little into uh, process here and um, forgive me for doing so. I, I guess my feeling is this is one of the very most important, if not the most important contract, a certainly sizable contracts that the municipality will be entering into um, in our, uh, certainly our term, maybe our, our lifetime. Um, so there were, I understand that there were six individuals um, on the selection committee of, 
am I right? Nodding is nodding is just fine. Five. So I see CEO, director, ops, utilities manager, building an asset manager, and a representative from the consultant. So help me there. I'm counting six. Uh, I'm hearing five. What I'm wondering, I guess, is was the representative from OS um, ba basically there as a um, sort of ex officio advisor, or was that person scoring as well? They were scoring as well, uh, Councillor Butler. Um, their scoring was there to provide a, a truly independent view um, um, of, uh, of the submissions. Um, and I think maybe the confusion lies in the uh, just the titles and maybe how they're presented. Um, maybe it's that the buildings and asset manager is one person. Um, they're, they're not, there's not one person for buildings and one person for asset management. And so that might be. So we had uh, Mr. Greathead, uh, uh, Mr. Moshot, uh, the uh, utilities manager, the buildings and asset manager, uh, myself as CAO, and the other side advisory. Right, thanks. No, no, I'm afraid the confusion is that I can't count. Um, so that's, that's more clear, thank you. And so scoring was done individually and independently, and then scorings were accumulated and pooled, and then the outcome presented itself as we've seen. But if I understood what I think Mr. Grade had said, the recommendation is unanimous among the, now I understand it to be five members. Um, so there are sort of no dissenting opinions that this is a solid unanimous recommendation in the end, having got to that place through uh, the process that we just discussed. Is, am I characterizing that fairly? Uh, yes, Councillor Butler, uh, I'll say that you are. Uh, I'll, you know, uh, Mr. Greyhead was also on the evaluation committee and I'll ask him to share his view. But um, certainly, um, to be very specific, each submission was individually scored um, by each member. Uh, each member submitted their scores uh, independently uh, to the other side advisory, who then presented those scores back to us. Um, and, uh, and then we had that sort of process of rolling them up into combined scores. Uh, over two sets of evaluations, I uh, should say. There was the first evaluation, just sort of the paper evaluation of the four submissions that were received. Um, through that first level of analysis, the committee chose to move on three proponents onto the second round, uh, where we actually conducted interviews with each of the three. Again, each of the three were scored independently. Um, essentially, we each reviewed our previous scores to see if the new information uh, changed those scores. Uh, and then we again independently submitted those scores to the other side who rolled them up. Um, and we had a discussion about, uh, about whether the, the, the math essentially, because at that point it was purely adding these numbers produces this result. Does that accurately reflect what everybody thought that they heard? And my sense was that, that it did. Uh, Mr. Greathead obviously was in all of those conversations as well and, and may have a few. Mr. Given, you summed it up uh, perfectly of the process. That's exactly how it went. Um, I don't think I have anything further. Councillor Butler. Thanks very much. Just following up, I appreciate that. That gives me the insight I was looking for. And I'm certainly satisfied with the answers. Uh, only one final question. Is it usual and necessary on the public record to identify the successful uh, applicant, though as, as yet not necessarily successful, I guess, um, but not identify the other applicants. And I'm just wondering why that actually is the case, given that Aquaterra doesn't yet have a contract, uh, but their name is public while the names of the uh, other two shortlisted or in fact the other three long listed uh, is not being put on the public record. I'm wondering at the rationale behind that. Uh, you know, I, I think Councillor Butler really could have gone either way. Um, I think administration chose to take a conservative approach to ensure that we were um, protecting as much as possible uh, the information of the uh, parties who made submissions. Um, so that uh, there, we could avoid any perception of a negative reflection upon their capabilities um, if they were not the, you know, the identified um, preferred proponent. 
um, maybe that was uh, a, an exercise in, in extra precaution, um, but we just wanted to ensure that we were fairly presenting um, the scorings for council's information without negatively reflecting on the proponents uh, who made submissions. We have and will be offering, uh, once the process is fully concluded, we will offer the opportunity for anyone, uh, any of the companies who made a submission to review their submission, uh, their own submission, to see uh, how it was scored so that they might have an opportunity to improve in the future uh, for other submissions that they might make in other places. Um, so we will work with all of the proponents so they can understand why they scored what they did score. Um, but we just want to act with extra precaution here to make sure that we weren't disclosing anything that might reflect negatively on any of the other um, non-preferred proponents. Great, thanks very much for those answers. It sounds like a, a really rigorous process and I'm happy to have learned more about it. Okay, uh, if there's nothing further from councillors, uh, we'll be uh, moving on to 8.3, but uh, prior to that, oh, sorry. Um, did you get yeah. Oh yeah. Sorry. Wilson, looking looking for a motion. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Mayor Island. I will make that motion that uh, committee of the whole recommend that council direct administration to enter into a contract negotiations with the identified successful applicant uh, for a ten year operating contract of the Jasper wastewater treatment plant. Thank you for that. Uh, any further questions? All in favor? That's unanimous. Um, thank you. You have what you need, Mr. Gibbon. Thank you. Uh, so what we're gonna call a comfort break, uh, let's say uh, 10 minutes, so 11.10, we'll come back uh, and we'll tackle uh, 8.3. Okay, so uh, looks like everybody's tuning back in. Um, we're moving on to uh, item 8.3, status update on Culture Rec Services Review. Please, uh, Mr. Gibbon. Sure, thanks very much, uh, Councillor Wilson. Um, I'll uh, be supported by uh, Ms. McNabb. Uh, Yvonne's there on screen. Um, uh, after the discussion at uh, Council last week where uh, Councillor Demota raised uh, this issue, um, administration did some review and uh, was able to identify that uh, council had engaged RC strategies to do some research and engagement on uh, this topic, the uh, culture and recreation services and facility review. Um, that work was paused in February of 2020 and hadn't uh, sort of been picked up since. Um, in consultation with the contractor, RC strategies, um, administration identified um, that uh, there were a number of items in the draft report that actually have been completed uh, since it uh, was paused. Um, and there are some other um, inaccuracies that um, um, and you know, minor formatting errors, those sort of things that need to be addressed. Um, RC suggests that the next step would be to report back to the community essentially what uh, was gained from uh, the community conversations and discussion that was had in the development of the draft. And then finally, uh, they'd recommend that, uh, bringing that back to Council Committee for presentation um, and RC would be uh, would would be here to make that presentation. So um, if Council wishes to restart this process, uh, then administration uh, has the recommendation that you'll see in the report that you give us direction. And this, to be clear, uh, is committee giving administration some direction, uh, certainly is within the scope of work that we can undertake within current resources. Um, and uh, we would work with the uh, consultant to take the draft report out to the community, gain that final round of input, do the polishing that's required before presenting that draft back at a future council committee the whole meeting. Um, and if there's any other questions you have for me or Ms. McNabb, we're both here um, at your pleasure. Okay, well, I'll, I'll open it up to councillors. Councillor McGrath, please. 
Thank you very much, Deputy Mayor Wilson. I'm happy to see this back and thank you very much to administration for bringing it back so it doesn't get lost. And I believe that the recommendation as it's been put forward by administration is, is perfect and to engage stakeholders in the community to essentially close the loop and um, bring it back to council at a committee of the whole meeting. So I'm really happy with the recommendation as it's laid out in this report. And I have to say, Mrs. McNabb, it's so nice to see your face. Thank you for that, Council McGrath. Councillors, did I see your hand up there, Demona? Or, yeah, Councillor Demona, there you go. Thank you, Wilson. Um, no, thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor Wilson. Uh, yeah, I'm very grateful for this report and sorry for uh, getting back late. I was having some technical difficulties here. Uh, yeah, the, I'm glad that the Culture and Rec Board, uh, there were some people on there that were requesting to get some feedback on that. And I'm, I'm glad it, uh, it's keeping us alert to the situation and uh, I'm looking forward to moving forward. Yeah, thank you. Mayor Ireland, please. Thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor Wilson. Um, through you to Mr. Gibbon, um, well, I can certainly support the, the recommendation. Um, it directs um, the solicitation of input, but doesn't define at all the scope or method of that solicitation. And so are, are you entirely happy with that? Um, and is council entirely happy with just leaving that entirely open-ended? There is a suggestion in the background of what that might look like, but it's not part of the recommendation. And I'm personally content to, to leave it that way if, if you are comfortable on behalf of administration to leave it as open-ended as it appears to be. Uh, Deputy Mayor Wilson for Mayor Ireland. Yes, uh, Mayor Ireland, we, we are comfortable with that. Um, you know, we appreciate that uh, this had been something council is working directly with the consultant on. Uh, and really the consultant has laid out, um, you know, the engagement steps up to this point. Um, we're just looking from, for confirmation from council, essentially that you are comfortable with us taking that draft out for that final round of engagement as suggested by the consultant. Um, we would support them in whatever they needed to, to, to get that out there uh, in the method that they recommend. Um, and uh, ultimately, you know, it will be draft until council finally adopts the report. So um, we are uh, taking the advice of the consultant that council engaged uh, in terms of the method of consultation. And that's why the report isn't specific to that. If the consultant suggests something else, uh, we didn't want to hem them in by being overly specific in the recommendation. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, anything further, councillors? And would you like a motion, Mr. Gibbon? Yes. Uh, sorry, councillor Jeanneau, I saw your yes or no. No. Okay, councillors, uh, do I have a motion uh, for Mr. Gibbon? For administration? Councillor McGrath? I can make that motion, councillor Wilson. So, yeah. Uh, Sorry, would you like me to read it? Yeah, could you cl clarify, please? Yeah, that council direct administ administration to solicit external stakeholder input on the draft culture and recreation services and facility review before bringing back the report to committee of the whole for final review. Everybody understand uh, the question? Call the question, all in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you. Going forward. Oh, uh, sorry, Miss McDab. While I'm getting back to my uh, uh, agenda, go ahead, please. No, nope, I was just waving goodbye. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Thank you. All right, uh, so here we are, uh, 8.4 Healthy Communities Funding Application. Uh, who's guiding us through this one? 
Mr. Gibbon, um, please. Yeah, thanks, uh, Deputy Mayor Wilson. Um, very briefly, administration um, through uh, Mr. Greathead was made aware of a potential grant opportunity um, that has a deadline that's coming uh, very quickly. You'll see in the report that the deadline to submit to this grant is March 9th. Um, and a part of the grant application requires a resolution of council endorsing its submission. Um, so the Healthy, Healthy Communities Initiative is an initiative of the federal government where they have provided $31 million of funding to the Community Foundations of Canada. So the government of Canada has provided uh, funding to this um, third party body uh, with the intent that that funding would be rolled out to um, organizations across the country. Um, the intent is to make improvements to public spaces, uh, particularly, but not exclusively, as a result of uh, ongoing needs arising from COVID-19 and recovery. Um, it is a fairly flexible grant. You'll see in the report uh, the discussion of the uh, focus areas that uh, the three focus areas of safe and vibrant public spaces, improved mobility options, or digital solutions. Administration is essentially proposing uh, a number of physical improvements um, of items that are uh, already identified in our budget. Um, this grant would help us make additional progress on these priorities or address priorities that we wouldn't otherwise recommend as, as um, high enough priority for making it into the 2021 budget. Uh, those include uh, the development of a streetscape plan, which would offer the opportunity for the municipality to have an overall comprehensive plan for uh, our street design um, and street furniture and other items. Um, and that would have a longer term benefit to the community that we would be able to use to guide decision making in the public realm. Um, we see the opportunity to make improvements for uh, sidewalks um, to reduce barriers for people with mobility issues, uh, particularly seniors who've been directly impacted by COVID of having to be um, confined potentially to homes more than they might have been in the past. And so making improvements to um, pedestrian pathways would be important. Um, Mr. Greathead and his team identified that uh, we have a number of uh, planters that are in need of some TLC. Um, we have also included benches, and particularly the Memorial Bench Program. Uh, Mr. Greathead has identified that there are a number of memorial benches that have been removed and not replaced as a result of budget concerns. Uh, this obviously is a concern for those people who had put the memorials on the benches in the first place, but also because uh, the lack of benches prevents people with mobility issues from having a place to take a rest uh, while they're out uh, on a walk or a stroll. Um, Council is well aware, I think, of the improvements needed to wayfinding around the community to help both visitors um, and, uh, um, and the general population find their way around the community. Um, Administration is proposing to uh, turbocharge that effort to make some additional progress. Um, and there is associated work going on in CFS. Uh, with respect to the consideration of additional um, languages in the wayfinding, which we may be able to coordinate with an initiative like this. And then finally, there's the concept of a patio grant. And again, um, you know, council, before we get too into the details of any one specific here, I just want to identify that these are conceptual in nature for the purposes of allowing us to apply for the maximum possible under the grant. Um, and ultimately any program that was initiated would come back to council. But the concept here being the municipality could choose to partner with uh, businesses in the establishment of um, temporary patios. Uh, I know that patios are a discussion, a significant discussion with council and among the community. Um, but the concept here is that uh, the municipality may be able to support businesses in um, making a longer term investment in higher quality patios that could be reused. Um, and this is actually something that was specifically identified in the grant as an example of things that have been done across Canada. And so that's why given the discussion that's happened about patios recently in Jasper, uh, the fact that it was identified in the application as, a, as an example of improving public spaces, um, administration thought it might be wise to see if we could get some additional financial support into Jasper to support an appropriate implementation of patios. Again, that is the smallest amount um, and the Chamber of Commerce has been consulted on this and they would be happy to provide a letter of support at least for that part of the application. Um, so again, the intent here is uh, at a high order to seek council's approval for administration submitting the grant application um, to enhance our ability to move forward on these capital infrastructure improvements in our public spaces.
Thank you for that. Uh, councilors, questions, comments? Mayor Ireland. Thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor, through you to Mr. Given. I, I support um, the initiative and, and thank you um, and administration for bringing it forward. Um, I can see no reason why we wouldn't apply for, for grant funding for these various items. The only comment I, I make is with respect to your, to your comments um, about the use of, or at least potentially um, using some of the funds conceptually to allow businesses in the community to make more permanent fixtures to move into um, commercial use of public spaces. And I just raise again, and it's not the most significant thing, but the more we call it a patio grant, the more we entrench the notion that it is directed just at one segment of our, of our business sector. And the intent was that anybody could do this. So that could be a grant um, to build a, a more permanent looking sidewalk to allow a retailer other than food and beverage to move onto the sidewalk. And I, I think we should take care to make sure that our, our wording matches our intent. and We, we don't get in our own way um, and leave the suggestion for others that this is um, directed at a single um, aspect of the, of the business sector. But apart from that, I, I appreciate it's a, a relatively small matter. But apart from that, um, I, I thank um, you and staff for bringing this forward. And um, Deputy Mayor Wilson, I'm, I'm prepared um, to make that motion that Committee of the Whole recommend that Council approve the submission of an application to the Canada Healthy Communities Initiative in an amount of up to $260,000 for improvements to public spaces within the town site. Thank you for that, Mayor Ireland. Um, <clears throat> Councillors, uh, before I call the question, anything further? Uh, Councillor Butler. Thank you very much, Deputy Mayor Wilson. I also um, feel quite cautious about that last line item and just to build a little on what Mayor Ireland pointed out. I mean, it, it's little money and um, it, it's small in proportion to the size of the grant. I guess I'm just a little concerned that we not in any way, even just through this conversation, position ourselves as having in some sense created motion toward an approval of any sort of ongoing change to the commercial use of public space policy and position ourselves that we are working ourselves toward a decision to allow out more outdoor patio seating in the future. And I'm, I'm just concerned about that because we haven't. Uh, we, I think, are some way, in my view, quite a long ways from making decisions about an ongoing expansion of outdoor patio space, as opposed to what we have chosen to do during the period of COVID. So I just feel cautious about that and that no one ought to, uh, to take the view that we are necessarily as council of a mind that we intend to go down that road. Thank you. Councilor McGrath. Thank you for the report administration. It was well delivered and I fully support the initiative of applying for a $260,000 grant for these improvements within our community. They're of significant importance, especially the mobility challenged residents. And especially during the times of COVID-19, it's really highlighted the need for upgrades in our, in our sidewalks specifically. And I thank you for this and support the the recommendation as it is presented. Anything further? I'll call the question. All in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you. Carry on. That brings us to item 8.4, I believe it is. Uh, Oh, nope, sorry, we've uh, struck 8.4 or finished 8.4, uh, um, item nine, other new business. Councillors, uh, Councillor McGrath. 
I have one item of new business to bring forward, and it's not the first time we've heard it. Um, since we have been in this council term, it's been brought up by numerous residents on the west end of town that there is little safety for pedestrians to cross the road from one side of Cabin Creek or Benalm to the other side. And we've had many conversations over the years about the need for um, administration to look into the need for pedestrian crosswalks and to hear the residents' concerns on the west end of town. But it never resulted in action. And the transportation or the um, transportation advisory committee was since dissolved. So I'm afraid it's left the conversation of pedestrian crosswalks on the west end of town off the table. And I'm here today to reignite that conversation and re remind us of the needs of the residents that did express the concern of their children's safety to us um, in previous years. So my hope today through this bringing it up in new business is to present a motion that Committee of the Whole direct administration to examine the issue of crosswalks for safe pedestrian crossing in Benalm and Cabin Creek and return back to Committee of the Whole with recommendations. Thank you for that, uh, Council McGrath. Um, would like to speak further? Uh, so let's go, Councillor Butler, and then, yeah, uh, Given, and then uh, Councillor Demona, please. Sure. Thanks very much. Uh, thank you. Um, sorry. Thank you, Councillor McGrath, for bringing that forward. You're, you're quite right. This came up for conversation um, a number of times. Um, I think you brought it up. I brought it up. I think maybe it's come up. I think maybe Councillor Demota brought it up as well. And um, through a fairly long conversation a couple of three years ago, I can't remember the date, we did um, make one change, and that was crosswalks across Mayette uh, in that area of town. But you're quite right. We sort of left unsolved the real objection that was raised by some community members in that part of town that there are no crosswalks at all across Benam between, I think, um, the entry into what we call Cabin Creek West, I can't remember what that street is, and then all the way down to Moline, uh, where I think there is a crosswalk, and it's too far. And my recollection is that uh, we sort of got bound up in um, a lack of, there were no ideal solutions. The curb configurations and so on around there are are difficult, but it is what it is, and we, we need, at a minimum, to have, I think we need two crosswalks at, at least in there. I think we need one at Mayad and we need one at, is that Willow? Whatever that other street is there. And I'm completely in favor and we did kind of allow that ball to be dropped. So I appreciate you bringing forward. I'm fully in support of your motion. I wondered if we might just specify the area of town we're talking about, which I think is between Maline and Willow crossing Banam. I, I don't have a map in front of me. Uh, sorry, uh, Mr. Given. Yeah, Deputy Mayor Wilson, I was actually just going to chime in. Uh, the motion is clear, uh, just with the uh, exception of maybe specifying. The one thing that I have learned about Jasper is that Benam is a pretty pretty long street. <laughs> it is essentially the backbone of the community. And so just if there is a bit more specificity, just so administration would be able to zoom in. Um, and I uh, would look, um, it, I would suggest that it probably is between uh, Maline and Willow. Um, and that if that's the case, um, that's very helpful. And if, if uh, that was a part of the motion, um, you know, the examination of pedestrian crossings on Benalm uh, between Willow and Maline, administration would uh, understand the scope that council is looking for and would be happy to return with some recommendations. I think for clarification, it's uh, it's crossing Benalm at, uh, at Willow, but not Maline. Uh, that's further down. So, um, so the sidewalk ends on on uh, Bonham at uh, at Willow, and there's a necessity of the sidewalk there, but uh, or sorry, a crosswalk there, and if not further down Bonham as well. But mm -hmm. and I'm in full support of this, but uh, I also 
I, again, believe that the speed limit should be reduced there and, and the crosswalks are not going to solve the problem. It's, it is a highly congested area with lots of small children and, you know, crosswalks, great, but the uh, speed limit there is is a, an issue that uh, we dropped the ball on, I think. Uh, so carrying on, Councillor Demota. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I'm glad that uh, this was brought up for discussion again. And uh, last time that uh, we discussed this in length and when we talked about speed limits, uh, many people um, contacted me and, and and tried to explain that that people aren't speeding and it's not locals that are doing it. Um, I live in the area and um, I observe ridiculous speeds daily. Um, I'm walking my dog there all the time and there, there are pinch points and uh, between Moline and uh, further down into to Cabin Creek there, there uh, there's no crosswalk. Uh, for children to get across, particularly when they're going to school and coming back home. So, um, you know, unfortunately, uh, this was one of the uh, topics of discussion for the Traffic Advisory Committee to get finalized, and that was dissolved, and uh, it's been in limbo since then. I think that uh, the earlier that we can get this addressed and uh, maybe for the next council to, to review speed limits again, um, I don't think that'll be within our capacity to do so now. But uh, I think I'm, I'm grateful that, that the crosswalk conversations come up again. And, and that's something that I, I think needs to get done as soon as possible. Thank you. Councilor McGrath. If I may read my amended motion that Committee of the Whole recommend, or sorry, direct administration to examine the issue of crosswalks for safe pedestrian crossing on Banam at Anom Willow intersection and return back to committee of the whole with recommendations. Anything further? Shall I call the question? All in favor? And that's unanimous, thank you. Well, thank you for that, uh, Council McGrath. So uh, moving on, any other new business? No new business. Uh, we have uh, item, uh, sorry, 10, uh, correspondence. I don't believe there is any correspondence on the agenda. Uh, item 11 is motion action list, which is attached. Uh, Mr. Gibbon, would you like to review that, please? Thanks. Sure, thanks Deputy Mayor Wilson. Uh, yeah, so uh, starting at the top, the utility rates model. Uh, at the last meeting, there was some discussion about uh, whether administration was taking under work, um, undertaking any work, excuse me, on that item. Um, council had the uh, memory that, that there was some discussion about it before the end of the year. Uh, administration went through the minutes of the uh, meetings and as best as possible, uh, the what we were able to find was that council indicated that it would like to move forward with a tiered model at some point in the future, but that was not defined about you know council's wishes of when that should come forward. So we uh, it was not a motion per se, um, but we did capture that there was some discussion about it. It is presented here um, for uh, just to get a little bit of additional clarity about council's expectation of when that should come back. Um, and uh, exactly what sort of scope you had in mind. Um, and again, we don't need to necessarily delve into the specifics of the ins and outs of different tiered models for utilities today, um, but really administration is, is seeking some additional clarity on direction from council on exactly when you would like this to come back by and exactly what is it that you're expecting administration to present? Is there any additional work that's required? Um, because I'm at least aware, although I wasn't here, that there was um, some significant work done on, on some models. So were you just expecting to have those represented again for council consideration? Um, and if that's the case, when would you wish to have them represented? I guess is the question. So we want to follow up on that conversation, get some clarity so that we could get it listed and start to make some progress on this priority for council. So some discussion around this item uh, would be helpful. Councillors, uh, can we shut any late? 
Um, Mayor Ireland and then uh, Councillor Butler, please. Well, I, I appreciate um, Councillor or Deputy Mayor Wilson uh, through you to Mr. Gavin. I appreciate um, the request for clarity and uh, perhaps council was clear to itself and clear to nobody else. Um, but I, I think that this is captured as well in the notes of the strategic priority meeting that we held on December 22nd. And I think the, the, um, the final kind of list of priorities for the coming year included an in-depth review of the utility rates bylaw. So we anticipated as a group that we would dig into this um, early in the new year is, is my recollection. So I would think that it is a strategic priority of council for this final year of our term. And that perhaps the, the best way to deal with this is as a strategic priority and roll it into the discussion that we confirmed earlier today um, where we are going to meet in any event as a strategic priorities committee, because this is this is one of them. And my recollection is that our hope was that we might get this resolved um, in time, even to implement before the end of term, even though it would be a bylaw in, in mid year. Um, I think we are all interested in taking advantage of all of the excellent work that administration has done and brought to us uh, in the fall. We had a lengthy discussion. Um, I think there is no council better informed on the issues now than, than we have had, had um, the pleasure through the through our own staff to get us to this point. So we wanted to take advantage of that and we want to do it early. So I think it is a, a compelling strategic priority. And if we roll it into that discussion, maybe we'll get some movement on it. I'd like to, uh, Mr. Given and then to respond and then we'll move to Butler. Uh, thanks, uh, Deputy Mayor Wilson. So yes, um, just an observation, I guess, would be that uh, Mr. Greathead, uh, the utilities uh, team um, are particularly focused right now on the transition. Uh, you just heard about the uh, wastewater treatment plant operations, the contract negotiations that'll be undertaken over the next little while. And I wonder if there might be some opportunity uh, to engage the expertise of our, of our new contractor. Um, that may or may not be possible, but in any case, uh, I can you know, relate that administration um, is quite tasked with uh, a lot of activities in the utilities area right now. Uh, having said that, it is not lost on administration uh, that this council has done a lot of work and it would be a shame um, to arrive at the election and a potential change in council um, and have that lose any momentum that it had. So in terms of a target date, if, it, if council was open to setting some, you know, a target date that was, um, gave administration some flexibility uh, to bring this forward uh, would be helpful, um, but that it was clear that the intent was to have it come forward prior to the 2021 municipal election or prior to, you know, August 1st or, you know, but just, to give us a little bit of space, because as I say, I know our utilities manager is in the midst of a significant transition and contract negotiations, which obviously need to take um, a significant amount of their focus. Um, but it is not lost on me that this is a priority for council. So I just would request that uh, if council's putting a timeline on this, that that uh, we give administration a little bit of elbow room to balance other priorities that are there as well. Mayor Island. If, if I could just um, respond to that. Um, thank you, Deputy Mayor Wilson. Um, from my perspective, at least, um, I would not anticipate that we would be making further demands of administration. I appreciate they have all sorts of things on their plate, but they have already done um, extensive work on this. So I think this is a matter for council to come to grips with where we, where we go with it. Um, and I, I would not, um, at all suggest that we want to impose um, further burdens on staff. They've done excellent work. We just have to wrap our heads around where we want to go with it. Councillor Butler. Thanks. And I agree with everything that has been said by Mayor Ireland and Mr. Given. Um, what occurred to me is that 
if I was to go back over the conversations that we had about this issue starting in, it was late September, early October that we really began to look at this, I agree that administration had done a lot of work. And if there was one thing that we stumbled on on this is um, that we didn't have sort of the top level strategic discussion that we probably needed to have prior to administration doing a lot of pretty specific work on modeling. And I'm talking about the kind of conversations that encompass um, to what extent do we hope to recover utilities um, infrastructure costs through utilities billing as opposed to through the tax base. Um, another would be to what extent and in what way are we in favor of recovering those through a um, stepped or consumption-based model versus through a, a fee model? So we didn't have, and we didn't set up for ourselves the opportunity to have those sort of 30,000 foot level discussions. And therefore I think when we had some pretty good quality work brought to us with some pretty specific modeling, we were stumbling on that the, the fact that we hadn't really had those really early conversations. So I agree completely. It belongs at a strategic level conversation. I don't think that administration needs to do any work on this or bring anything back to us until the council has had those conversations. I agree. Mayor Ireland said that we can wrap those into those conversations that we've already agreed we're going to have. And then maybe we'll be in a position to provide some direction for administration where to go. But so let's do that. And I don't think administration needs to task itself with anything further at this point. Thank you, um, Mr. Gibbon, back to you regarding the motion action list. Yeah, thanks very much, Deputy Mayor Wilson. Uh, so on that item, uh, appreciate the discussion. Uh, we will reflect then that this uh, item around utility rates model will go to the council strategic priorities discussion. Um, and then uh, any outcome would come from there. I appreciate the clarity about the expectation uh, for work or no expectation for work uh, for administration on that issue. Um, you can see that there, uh, the pilot, the paid parking pilot project um, is on track to be coming forward to council on March 9th. Um, the targeted uh, boards and committees review is still on, on track. Um, in terms of uh, Ball Diamond A for Skateboard Park, um, we will come March 23rd as promised with uh, recommendations for engagement options. I will say that I've already reached out um, to uh, Daryl to have a bit of a discussion with him uh, to identify the specific concerns of the uh, skate park committee. Um, and then finally, uh, the item at the bottom, uh, the JCHC shareholder recommendation. So, you know, this is, I think, our first really good example of something that, where there was an input to council, uh, the letter from the JCHC shareholders um, with a recommendation. Uh, there was direction to administration, which administration has completed today. So I would suggest that this item can come off. It is, of course, replaced by other items, um, but, it, you know, th there will be items coming onto this list and leaving as they have been completed by administration. So my suggestion would be that the JCHC shareholder recommendation on parcel GC is complete and could be removed from the list. Um, and Councillor Wilson, Wilson, just as a matter of process, um, if council is agreement, in agreement with those recommendations, maybe a motion uh, to update the list as noted uh, would be appropriate. And then there's a confirmation from council that yes, you agree that we have completed that item. We returned on February 23rd, as we said we would. And next time you see this list, it will incorporate the items and motions that you made today on all the other uh, agenda items in front of you. Thank you for that. Uh, councillors uh, may have the motion, or may I have a motion? Is anybody willing to? Councillor McGrath? I love this list, and it really, really helps. So I'm super happy to help keep administration organized and make that motion. Thank you. Councillors, everybody understand the question? Uh, Councillor Butler, please. Thanks. And uh, Mr. Given, I just want to say how happy I am with to see this list uh, because it, not because of the list, but because of the um, improvements and changes to process that we're observing. And I'm just really happy about it. I guess I want clarity on only one thing. I understand now that this 
is a motion action list specific to committee the whole um, so that when we are taking an item off this, we are essentially recognizing that unless we refer it back to committee that we have completed it at committee level, um, is, is your idea that there would be a similar list um, at the council level or how do you feel about that? And um, I, I had recognized that this was a motion action list to specific to committee of the whole and uh, we might just for conciseness and clarity to the public label it as committee of the whole motion action list or something. Um, but would we see a similar list uh, for council or do you think that you know motions are brought to council and and uh, resolved with enough process that we actually shouldn't be maybe keeping a list because there shouldn't really be a list. Just your thoughts. Yeah, uh, yeah. Thanks, Councillor Butler. Uh, yes, you know it, it's um, you know it really is probably a matter of preference. Um, I think you know it's possible that motions arise at council that were not contemplated at committee. That is entirely possible. Um, I'd suggest that we probably don't need to have two lists uh, if there is a if council or committee directs administration to undertake any work, we will have captured on the one list for now. Um, I can advise uh, that um, uh, the administrative team already does keep a tracking list of council motions. Um, they have that, not that council had necessarily seen it, but we need to have a way to, to track council motions and that already did exist with a numbering system and everything. Um, and so we're essentially uh, at adding the committee actions to that. Um, but just incorporating all council direction on one list is probably appropriate for now, rather than having a list that references another list, which you know, references an action that happened. We'll, we'll try to keep it all in one place for ease of reference for council, administration, and the public. Mayor Island. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Wilson. I, I wonder whether I um, might propose um, an amendment to the motion. I'm not quite sure of the words, but I think the, the words of the motion were um, that the motion list be updated or words to that effect. If we are updating the motion action list, I would um, suggest that when it returns, it is absent individual names and names positions instead. I, I just have a degree of, of discomfort um, naming individuals and people aren't doing their work as individuals, they have positions. So for you, Mr. Given, if that was just replaced with CAO, we would know that it is yours, but it just seems to me that it is, it is more appropriate that we assign work to positions rather than individuals. Sure, Un understood, uh, Mayor Ireland, uh, seems like a reasonable request. And the overall intent is to give Council and the public some view into the workload. Um, and uh, to the point that you made, um, any one of these that have my name beside it, certainly the entire team is carrying these forward. Um, and uh, just because someone's name or position is not reflect on list doesn't mean that they're not doing anything. It just means that they are not actively uh, addressing something that has come from council by a motion. But uh, just to make that point, um, appreciate that suggestion on listing by title and we'll incorporate that in the next version of the list. Council McGrath, you, uh, you're happy with that uh, amendment to the motion? Uh, well, I'll call the question. Uh, all in favor? That's carried, thank you. Okay, uh, moving on to item 12, council representation on various boards uh, and upcoming events. Councillors? I'll start it off on Wednesday. Uh, we have uh, waste, waste management, Yellowhead Waste, West Yellowhead Waste uh, Management Authority, uh, regional, regional Waste Management Authority. Uh, uh, Mayor Ireland and I will uh, be attending that. Uh, Councilor McGrath, I saw your hand up. Thank you very much, Deputy Mayor Wilson. Last week, I attended the Jasper Community Team Society strategic planning session, as well as the community conversation. And tomorrow I will be present for the community conversation, which is school-aged children. And on Thursday, we'll attend the Jasper Community Team Society monthly meeting.
Thank you. Any other counselors? All right, moving on to uh, item 13, upcoming events. Uh, it's very uneventful. Uh, any counselors would like to add any events coming up? Nope. Mayor Ireland. Not an event, but I, I read today and it will be of interest to some. I know Mr. Mr. Given has expressed his interest and I know Councillor um, Butler um, is or has been a member, but it, it just happens that it came to my attention today that um, the first Rotary Club meeting ever was held on this date in 1905 by four fellows in um, Chicago. So for those of you who are Rotarians, and I think today is, is Rotary Day, um, congratulations on the anniversary. Councillor Juneau. Uh, as an upcoming event, I was wondering if we would have a grand opening of our new skating surface. I think it's a wonderful addition and I think that uh, we should highlight it with some kind of uh, opening event. Thank you. Councillor McGrath. Oh, sorry, uh, uh, Mr. Given and then uh, Councillor McGrath. Sorry. sorry uh, Just wanted to note that yesterday my son was the inaugural initiation team to skate on, on the ice and he had an excellent hockey practice that was perfectly balanced with safety mitigation and safety measures in place and and Pete at the arena door directing parents to stay outside and our little ones go in and I got to peek through the door at the, the ice and it looked beautiful and the boards looked beautiful and uh, well done to the arena staff and to uh, minor sports for working together and allowing uh, the possibility for the children to be on the ice in whichever capacity is possible. So thank you. Well, that's great news. Uh, Mr. Given. Sorry, uh, Deputy Mayor Wilson, I was just going to respond to uh, Councillor Jarnot's uh, point about a grand opening uh, to say a bit tongue in cheek, if the weather doesn't melt the rink first. <laughs> uh, we did, you know, sort of acknowledge that it would be a short season for this trial uh, rink and with the warm weather, I'm not certain that we'll have enough time to plan a grand opening. Uh, maybe that's something that we could plan for next year. Okay, right on. Um, Councillors, anything further? Right, we'll move on to uh, item 14 uh, in camera. We have two items in camera, 14.1 is a personal matter. Uh, CAO uh, performance feedback and um, and it's in camera under the FOIP Act. Act, yeah. 14.2, uh, uh, human resources matter and FOIP as well. Um, we will, uh, I think an email has probably been sent out for us. Um, Mr. Given, are we gonna uh, be required for any motions as we come out of camera? Or uh, any results uh, uh, that uh, the public should stick around for? Uh, no, Deputy Mayor Wilson, I don't believe so. Uh, certainly with the first item, it is uh, Council's uh, regular opportunity as my employer to give me uh, performance feedback. Uh, so I wouldn't expect there's anything arising out of that, or at least certainly I hope not. Uh, <laughs> and then on the second item, uh, that was an item uh, raised by council members. So. Uh, I don't believe there was any expectation that there would be any uh, motions arising. Um, and so uh, I can report that I will be uh, the only member of administration in attendance in the in-camera session. Um, and I will report back to the recording secretary, the council members which make uh, motions to adjourn council. And that's really the only things that would arise on the public record following. Okay, great. Thank you for that. Um, well, thank you uh, everybody for joining us. and. Uh, We'll call back in um, to the in-camera session at, uh, let's say, uh, 12.05. Um, is that acceptable for everyone? No. Okay, great. Thank you, everybody. Council, oh, sorry. Sorry. I just think we need a motion oh. of uh, which council member made the motion to go in-camera. Uh, Councilor Butler is making a motion to go in-camera? Yes. Yes, I'll make that motion. Thank you. Thank you. All in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. We'll move in camera. And uh, yeah, so again, uh, uh, what did I say? Let's say 1210, please. See you there. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.